Oh yeah, welcome back. Art of Motion Garage Episode 3. Listen to that theme song. That's me jamming. Woo! Welcome back to listeners. We're going to figure this out together. Hopefully it'll be a little less clunky this time. I'm calling this one the Super Street Special. So what we're going to do here is take the latest issue of Super Street, which is the Toyota issue, and just kind of thumb through it and see what comes to mind. Maybe we can get some inspiration here and figure something out. Hopefully the more that we do this, the more of an actual podcast this becomes. But whatever, there's cars involved, so we good. All right, the cover of this has a beautiful uh, Scion FRS on it. With a wide body, of course, because, I mean, it wouldn't be an FRS if it wasn't wide body. That's the craze these days, huh? Uh, I think a lot of it looks good. And then I think a lot of them look like they're trying too hard there's a real fine line there which is weird but okay let's open this thing up and see what we got first car i open it up to of course is a mark IV supra because this isn't going to be a toyota issue without one of those lingering around with who knows how much power in it and uh so the words and photos of this feature are by Jofel Tolosa, probably totally mispronounced that, but uh, the title of it is Supreme Kai, so let's get into this, it's a blue Mark IV Supra, uh, and it's a Mark IV Supra for sure, I mean it's got Volk wheels, a giant front mount, and HKS emblazoned down the side of it, because it wouldn't be a Mark IV Supra without that, no way. And it says a super owner of 18 years finishes finishes his most special project yet. Uh, this thing is really sweet. Let's read some specs and stuff on it. See, I'm not sure how much of this I can do without these guys' permission. Because this is kind of like a weird line where I'm taking somebody's intellectual property and just that i paid for and kind of giving it away on a podcast i gave him credit but still it feels a little bit weird so i'm just gonna refrain from trying to like read it word from word and uh just say what i would think if i was just reading this which is kind of hard to do when i know microphones recording me but uh Let's just run down the specs of this thing. It's a beautiful blue color and my favorite contrast color of all time, which is like a billet purple color. Uh, You'll probably, if you follow me on Instagram at Art of Motion Garage, you'll probably see that my Integra has sprinkles of that here and there because purple is my favorite color and cars are my favorite, one of my favorite things. So naturally, I clash those two together. But this one, yeah, has uh, obviously two Jay-Z. Looks like a big single setup. Uh, Beautiful plumbing going on here. Black braided hose and all the billet purple fittings. As well as the velocity sack on the compressor housing. So let's get some specs here. We got 766 wheel horse and 600 foot pounds on E85. Not too shabby. Also, not too crazy for a Mark IV Supra. Man, it's got a HKS Turbo. Type R intercooler and wastegate. Man, this thing's loaded up pretty nice, man. 450 liter per hour dual fuel pumps. 
That's how much fuel it takes to power these bad boys. But again, I love the color combo. It's like a deep blue color. And silver Volk SF Challenge wheels, which that's, I feel like, such a classic wheel, but. And I almost I feel like I always see them on Mark IV Supers. What a beautiful car, huh? I know Toyota's trying to bring that car back in whatever form, at whatever time, but that is definitely going to be hard to do. I mean, there's going to, there's, everybody who loves Supers loves Supers, and they can do no wrong in your head. Or in their head, rather. So it's going to be hard to convince those people they got something that's worthy of the name. As well as myself. I mean, this is just an icon. I feel like if you get this wrong, I mean, that's a big slip up. People are definitely going to raise an eyebrow at that. But I mean, this thing, what year is this thing? A 94? This thing looks like it could roll off the showroom floor now. Like that's how, I guess that's what I feel like makes it such an icon sometimes, is the body work and the timeless design of that. It's so round and just like, big and bubbly, but it doesn't look as cheesy as that sounds. It's just a great looking car. And up here in Vermont, there's definitely not a lot of them. I mean, there's I've probably seen three native cars, native Mark IVs, that I can ever remember. If you see one of those around here, you definitely whip your head around going, whoa, who's this? Who's that? Who's got that? There was a white one, and I've seen a red one, and a gray one, who's like the owner of the Toyota dealership over here. But that's it. So I know a lot of the other guys are pretty spoiled and probably probably get sick of seeing these dang things. They must be everywhere. But, like I said, I'm up in the corner of nowhere where there's not a lot going on at the level that you're seeing in a lot of media, especially Super Street. I mean, this is the cream of the crop. Which is sad, because it sucks. I don't really get a lot of chances to see some of this stuff in the flesh. Uh, there's a probably one big car show a year around here. It's a Euro one called Wolfskart. And that's pretty huge. And so that's probably, those are the highest level cars that I get to see. And man, I always get juiced up after I come home from that. But yeah, it's a shame. You know, like I said, I'm a family man too. There's not like, I can't just hop in and go, which... I mean, I'm fine with, I'd love to do it more often, but, you know, it doesn't work that way. But I really can't wait to get my daughter into some of this stuff. She's already grabbing tools and wrenching around on stuff, pretending to anyway, so that's super exciting. I can't wait for that. But yeah, that Mark IV Supra is beautiful. Oh, let me give the owner's name real quick. What do we got here? Nick Stonewat Whiskey. Man, these are like the worst names for me to try and pronounce. Nick Stono Stonowski. Well, buddy, you got yourself a great Mark IV there, man. What do we got next? An A86, another car you don't see a lot of around here for sure. It looks like this one has an SR20. Now that's got to piss a lot of Toyota people off, huh? These, but I mean, it's such a perfect car to do something like that with. I've seen F20Cs, I've seen SR20s. Um, the original motors hopped up with. All sorts of stuff done. I mean, those just seem like pretty decent car. It, things got to be. They can't be all that cheap now. That's the thing. A lot of these cars, I mean, 10 years ago, you could probably get for dirt cheap. But nowadays, with the sort of boom of the old uh, 
Japanese cars. I can't foresee getting any of these things on a good deal, in good shape. You can get a good deal on one, but it's a piece of junk. This thing is pretty nice. We got an SR20. You got any power specs on this thing? Hmm. It's not always about power, man. Why is that the first thing I look for? So weird. Work equip 03, too. How classic of a wheel that is. That's another thing that you could just, you could make a whole other podcast on wheels. I'm going to say, so, Japanese wheel company wise, top three for me, number one would be for sure be the Regamaster Evo slash Spoon. SW388s. I mean, the, is there a more iconic wheel than that? Yes, of course there is. The Volk T37. That would be second for me. Those two wheels have got to be the most knocked off wheels of all time. They have to be. Every like knockoff wheel company has a version of those two wheels. Man. That's how you know you made it, man. Everybody's copying your shit. I mean, those wheels have been knocked off for years and years. More than probably most wheel, a lot of wheel companies have even been around. But that, that was another one when I was young. It was all about spoon wheels. Like everybody would say, spoon wheels, spoon wheels, gotta have spoon wheels or the spoon knockoffs, the spoon knockoffs. I remember there were a couple cars around town and that, what was like the first knockoff before the road even? I feel like it was Nippon. Like Nippon wheel. They made a similar version, like a knockoff of the spoon wheel. And, uh, man, like, it's crazy. But those, I say fucking crazy too much on this thing. I need to stop saying it. What is wrong with me? Like I said, this is clunky as shit. I'm just trying to talk about cars, but it's kind of hard when you got a microphone in your face. Especially me. I'm not a particularly, particularly talkative person. So trying to just talk into a microphone is like a bad idea for me. But I want to do it because I feel like this is something that I got to do. For right now, at least, I'll probably get bored and stop doing it, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, so, top three wheels. I have Regamaster. And for me, number two, it would probably be the Workmeister. I love that. Though, like, here's how I'm judging wheels, in my opinion. If they can look good on anything, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a hard thing to do. Think about how many different cars <clears throat> there are. And then think about taking like a Rega Master and putting it on those cars. And if they, I can't think of one that would look terrible. Immediately if I saw authentic Rega Masters or Volk T37s on wheels. That car immediately is cool to me. And I wonder just, like, why? Why is that? So those two wheels, and then third... Third or fourth, what did I say? I said Rega Master T37 and the Workmeister. And then I'm going NK RPF NK RPF one, which I have a set off because I've always wanted a set of these, and I got myself a set, and they're actually sitting next to me right now. 
because my car's on jack stands and they're just kind of stopped stacked up next to me uh in silver my integra silver i don't know i like silver and silver too i think that's a pretty sweet sort of stealthy kind of just like clean look and that's what i'm in i like i don't try to be too flashy i sprinkle colors in here and there but i'm not trying to like paint my shit tiffany blue <laughs> and be rolling down the road like look at me not even paint it literally like plastic dip it or wrap it what have you um so yeah so then i got to round out to a five what would be the fifth one hmm I have to say something, Mugen. I don't have to. But, um, MF10. And the, what are the real old, the CF48s on like EFs and CRXs? I think that just looks awesome. So, yeah. That's a uh, top five wheels, in my opinion, that look pretty good on just about everything. I mean, the CF48 or whatever, it definitely has to go on something old, an old Honda, clearly. So that kind of goes against my rule about car them looking good on everything, because they definitely uh, probably wouldn't look good on a Scion FRS. <laughs> So yeah, wheels, I feel like, are the most important part to me on anybody's car. And, you know, there's... The whole knockoff wheel thing is... I try to stay open-minded on that. Like, we've all had a set of them. Because maybe we just didn't care for the stock wheels on whatever car, and we just had to get something. I mean, anybody who tells you they haven't are full of shit. Because the, if you're a gearhead, the first thing you want to do is something to your car. So if you can get a set of something that just pops up for, you know, what a couple hundred bucks, you're going to do it. We were all born with forged monoblock wheels in our, in our garage, guys. Okay? Some of us had to get avid ones and i had a set of like the t37 ones and i got them for a good deal and they were cool for a little bit they were like the fake mag blue or hyper blue and they looked all right but the whole entire time it just wasn't right i would go oh it looks all right but you just knew by looking at it it wasn't like a legit authentic wheel you just knew it and that always cheapens cars to me even my own car like people would compliment them and stuff but it would just go one in here and right out the other and i would always have to stick up for myself like oh yeah i'm gonna get new wheels and you know i'm looking at whatever nk rpf ones and all and that's that. I always felt weird having those wheels. Like, oh, like I was doing something bad. Which is kind of dumb to think of. Because they're freaking wheels. My car is a street car. That, you know, it's not going to go. I'm not going to enter it in a week fest. You know? Yeah, anyways. Maybe one day. But. My point is, we've all been there, and if you have the mentality of like, all right, these will do me for now, until I can scrape something together to get something better, that's fine. But if you're like, rocking your XXRs like you're the man, and those are the greatest thing ever, and you're ready to die on that hill, I don't, I don't know about all that. To me, that's not the point. They look the part, but they don't look quite the part they don't quite look 100% they don't quite look 100 
but that's up to you. It's your car. If you're really in it to be in it, then what anybody says to you shouldn't mean shit. Back to the Super Street Especial. What do we got going on? This one. Oh, Civic Type R and an ad. Show it. For Yokohama Wheels. There's another one too. Advan RG2. Yeah. Sign me up. We got some gnarly time attack stuff and race carriage in here. Oh, here, what's this one? This is an FRS white wide body, the, the cover car actually. And look at that, it has blue T37s on it. I knocked your shit off, bruh. These cost like a quarter of the price. They look just the same. They fine. I smash curves with these. They stay up. This car is sweet. It's just like a rocket bunny sort of style kit. It's pretty crazy. And I think it looks pretty good. It's got the, you know, slits in the front fenders and rear quarters. Gnarly looking car. That's the thing too. That's another big trend right now, huh? Like giant spoilers. And the whole time attack look thing. Which is sweet on time attack cars. Because it functions. I see a lot of like street cars built up this way. Which I'm... It looks good, but man, I would be so afraid just smashing the thing off. Our roads up here are terrible. May as well just be dirt roads. They ride like such shit in some spots. Some spots are really nice, but you start getting out to the outskirts. We're in the boondocks. Up around Tia. And you're fucking your shit up. So rolling around with like side... Side skirts half an inch off, off the ground is not something I would be down for. Because I'm too picky with my stuff. Even this Integra, there's nothing special about it. But it's like, I don't know. The fact that I found that car totally stock. All original panels, all original engine. Owner's manual, just clean. First 10 years of its life, never saw a winner. And, like, it was taken to the dealer for everything. And I got a bunch of receipts to prove all that. And then I get it. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I owe the respect to that car to just keep it. Look after it and just make sure that nothing else happens to it. It's really strange. I don't even drive the thing in the rain. Like, it's a nice car, but it's still, at the end of the day, it's like a 01 Integra. Who cares? Sometimes I really wonder, like, why do I care about this thing so much? It's kind of goofy. I don't know if this is really working out. You know, I thought this would be easy. Just kind of scrolling through a magazine and getting ideas. But they've been hard to come by. Partly because I don't want to, like read all this stuff on here that I mean I don't know how any of these authors and stuff are, photographers are going to take me just like cause I mean I paid for this magazine and I'm kind of giving it away for free a little bit <laughs> if I'm kind of thumbing through it but the important part is I'm recording a podcast and doing the best I can Oh, what is this rotary power joint right here? It's a Corolla? Oh, dang. The title of this is Recycled Rotary. Okay. Words by Aaron Bonk and photos by Chad Burdett. This is a cool car. You know what I really like today? 
is seeing cool stuff like this. You see a lot of crazy mashups these days. And uh, I like seeing more of that. Because sometimes you can get a little cookie cutter with it. But this thing. Where's the specs on this bad boy? 1970 Corolla. This thing looks awesome. From Thailand. What? Go ahead, Thailand. I see you. This thing's got, uh, all right, 13B. Turbo. Not really. It's running even off the Mazda 13B ECU. That's crazy. That's kind of like a, yeah, see, these people are resourceful, man. These guys are right up my alley. I'm sure this car still costs a ton to make, though. R32 GTR front brakes. FD3S rear brakes. That's crazy, man. I get the title now. Recycled rotary. Because it's kind of a hodgepodge of parts on a 70 Corolla. This thing looks awesome. Almost looks like an old Porsche, kind of. Looks like it could be some weird, funky Porsche. Just the lines of it. Maybe that's what Toyota was going after. I don't know, the rear window area is like 911-ish. But this thing's orange, fuel tank in the back. 13B up front. This thing must be sweet, man. And like a duckbill sort of spoiler and it's wide body. With SSR formula mesh. 15 inch. Oof, that looks good. 15 by 9 in the front, 15 by 11 in the rear. SSR too, man. They're mesh wheels. That is definitely like a classic look on 70s or 80s stuff. There's another big knocked off wheel, huh? Mesh wheels, like the BBSRS. That may be top three most knocked wheel, knocked off wheels of all time. Regamaster spoon wheel. T37 and the BBSRS. Those three wheels have got to be the most knocked off wheels ever. I heard somewhere too, it was like uh, Adam Carolla's podcast. He went to like the BBS factory. I guess there's one in the US and Georgia or somewhere. And he did like a tour of it. And they said something about BBS declared bankruptcy twice in its lifetime. And I wonder, is that because of wheel knockoffs? It's That's got to hurt wheel companies. Like if you're BBS and all these companies are making money off your wheel design and people are buying into it and they're sipping that coid that they don't want to pay all that money for a wheel when they can buy a cheaper one that looks the same which is you know probably not that hard to convince normal people of that and they're buying all those wheels there's that's gotta cut into your bottom line if you're bbs it has to so that whole wheel knockoff industry has had to have been a part in those bankruptcies if that's even true who the frick knows man And that kind of made me feel bad for having those uh, knockoff wheels. Because I always think of that. Sometimes I really feel like a piece of shit that I had those wheels because I knew where the design came from. And I know, like, 
the kind of money it probably cost Volk to develop that wheel. And that wheel's been around for what? It's got to be 20-something years. And then just to have some asshole like me buy a set of ones that look like it because I want the look of that, but I don't have the money or want to spend the money on the real deal. Like, man, I get why people fuck with those fake wheel rockers sometimes. Because if you kind of think of it that way, it's like, man, you're almost just buying a, you're buying a stolen product almost. Which is gross, but again, not a lot of thought goes into that. It's more like, yo, can I look the part right now and go burn out in that parking garage over there and post it on Instagram? Word. And that's the sort of thing I hope I can help. Just by even like talking clunky conversations about cars, maybe it'll spark something in somebody and it'll make them think a different way or see my perspective a little bit. And that's all I hope to do. It's just kind of give some perspective, give some other angles you can attack this thing and get you pumped up to get in your garage and work on something. So that, I think we've been going in the right direction. I just got to figure out how to do this. So I'm just going to keep trying. I'm going to keep blabbling about blabbing about cars in my basement by myself to this microphone and see where it goes. So if you listen, thanks a ton. It really does mean a lot. Um, I got a DM today on Instagram from a local guy. I know Kevin. Thanks a lot, man, uh, for listening. It really means a lot. Tell everyone you know. Tell the boys. And uh, thanks for the support, man. Let's keep going. And uh, if you want to follow along, hit up Instagram, at Art of Motion Garage. All one word. And I'll see you next time.